Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 21, verse 1 to 11. As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the Bethphage at the Mount of Olives. There Jesus sent two of the disciples on ahead with these instructions. Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied up with her colt beside her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything, tell him the master needs them, and then he will let them go at once. This happened in order to make what the prophet had said come true. Tell the city of Zion, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did what Jesus had told them to do. They brought the donkey and the colt, threw their cloaks over them, and Jesus got on. A large crowd of people spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds walking in front of Jesus and those walking behind began to shout, Praise to David's son. God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was thrown into an uproar. Who is he? The people asked. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The crowds answered. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. How are you doing? Uh, when I was a leader, like Mia Seiji, you, can, you could see a Mia. I had a two heroes. I guess who? Maybe I don't know about your hero. Maybe somebody had a hero, Superman or Batman or Spider-Man like Avan. But my one was called Sonogon, Son Goku in English. From the comic books, it's very famous comic books. I bet in, some of you know. It's called Dragon Ball. Do you know? Okay. So do you know? Really? Okay, because I, I think we are living in different generation, but okay, you know? Okay, welcome to my generation, <laughs> okay? If you try to be, uh, looks like more younger than your actual age, you say just yes, I know it, okay? Uh, he was my hero who saved the world. And even, I don't mind he could save the world. He could fly, really fly. He flew on the clouds. And then I read and reread in comic books for picturing Sonogo almost every day, even in the Sunday in the worship service behind the chapel. And then I read secretly. Everything about him was so nice, great, wonderful. But as I told you, I have two heroes. And then who is another one? Guess. Okay. One is Sonogong, Sonoku from the comic books. Yeah, another one is, of course, he's Jesus Christ. Yeah. But this is not hero I choose, but the hero is chosen for me by my mom who wanted me to be a, become a pastor one day. Because I was born in a Christian family, so I knew about Jesus Christ. But one day, my mom asked me, Ingyu, if you want to become a pastor one day, you need to Jesus more than more. I said, ah, I don't got it. What does it mean, the more than more? I, he said, if you failing, you are, you seem to be failing in love with the Sonogo. I know how because you read and read the comic books whole your day. But like this, please read the Bible whole day. But that's quite challenging for me at the time. But when I was mere sage, I decided to read the entire Bible. I actually read it all, but it was not difficult at the time because most churches in South Korea read the Bible at least once a year, all the time, and then read all 66 books of the Bible. And all I had to was to sit in the chapel in the sanctuary for a week, just sit. Because at the church, all three meals a day were provided, and all I had to do was sit and listen to 
what the Bible readers said and read without falling asleep. It's, it's, it's very easy. Of course, a Korean is much easier language than any other language just listening. One day we started with Genesis, as you know, it was so fun, yeah, really. It sounds like a fantasy books, but sometimes close to the Dragon Ball. However, on Friday, when I entered the four Gospels, and then when I entered the Passion Weeks chapter, I was so disappointed in Jesus Christ. But why? Because he chose the donkey in Matthew 21. All the heroes I know, like Napoleon, choose to ride white horse. But Jesus chose a donkey. Yeah, that made me very disappointed materially. But let me tell you, I didn't, I didn't decide not to complicate today's sermon. Rather, I decided to give a much simpler and clear and easy sermon. But when Jesus entered the Jerusalem city, why Jesus choose a donkey rather than uh, any horse? Looks much nice horse. But that was because Jesus came to Jerusalem not with war, but with peace. This chapter it gave us a very strong lesson. Please don't ride the horse. At the time, Roman soldiers rode a the horse. They wanted to be seen as higher than any other Jews. And then, same time, the Pharisees want to be seen as higher than ordinary Jews. So they came to in the temple and they dressed in the fine clothes. But this modern society we live in is, is a show society. Most of people, they want to show, I'm more rich than others, I'm much richer than yours, and then I'm more smarter than others, and I'm better than others. Okay, let me tell you more example. In last Indian night, some of our children from our church, I don't want to mention their name, they climb a tree in the Caribou yard in night time. One of them is shouted, look at me, I'm better than you, pastor, because I climbed higher than you. I say, okay, you go. And then another kid also say, no, because I'm on higher tree. I'm better boy than you. What did I do? I say, well, should I have told them, okay, go higher, go higher? No, quite opposite. I told everyone, please, everyone, calm down right now. But, but they didn't listen. Pastor, sorry, it's much comfortable than any other place. We go to, we have a camping on a tree. But I know, I'm a this church parish pastor. You must obey me. Come down right now. And then they made, they disappointed them. I promised them we will create another proper, safer playground on the Caribou in the, with Avan and Avan's friend. At the time, anyway, let me back to my sermon. Roman Empire slowed the carriages. You may have seen the it in the movie Ben Hur. And Roman soldiers rode a horse and beat the people on the street. But Jesus chose a donkey. What does it mean? This means that Jesus came to us and came to this world in peace. Jesus is the Son of God. Come to bring peace within you. Actually, I don't know what is your horse in your life. But I know, please get off your horse right now. Because if we are looking at the, today's verse 5, Jesus showed us his humble. Please be humble in your life. Secondly, but however, people did not know exactly who is Jesus was at the time. If we look at, if we look at the verse 10, people say Jesus is Jesus of Nazareth. This is true, but this is not wrong. But it contains the expression of this regress. At the time, a Nazareth, a Nazareth means an uneducated people. 
some were up for people. It did not simply mean he was from the cold town Nazareth. However, the people of Jerusalem were very proud of themselves, so they live in the city of the temple, holy city. It, they, it was very easy to judge people from outside Jerusalem. People living in the Jerusalem and even in the Israel, they are easily judged the people coming from outside Israel. Oh, you are Gentile, you are stranger. Sometimes when I met the people from some town in the Mauritius, they say, I'm from Kuipi. I'm from Potroi. with very proudly. <laughs> yeah, but unlike this, at the time, people of Jerusalem have a too much proudly mind. Okay, who is Jesus? He is the Son of God. He came with peace to the city of Jerusalem. The people t The people of Jerusalem, they didn't know that because they only knew where Jesus came from. But they didn't know and they never seen the word of Jesus or the, word, the miracles of Jesus. They didn't know that at all. Okay, let me tell you my embarrassing moment. I like to make an embarrassing comparison here. Until I arrived in South Africa in 2014, I never spoke to black people, black person people. I'm sorry, Ola. <laughs> It's true. Because I only saw black people in the American movie. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ola. However, when I arrived in South Africa in 2014, uh, at the time I had to enter the art college to evangelize the children. Because I need to learn some another skill more than the pastoring and ministering in the church. But first day, I found that half of my university students are black. I was really surprised. It kind of amazing thing. And then, what was more surprising, amazing was the for the black people. To them, I was the first Asian guy. They like this, <gasps> you're to me. And before that, I had a very bad prejudice against the black people because all of these things I learned through, from American movies. Okay, black people bring us some guns on the pocket, like this. But that's not true, of course. But at that time, I didn't know that if that was true or not. But one day, While I was studying in the art college, I was kind of one of the top students over there. Yeah, you, I'm very sure. One of the 24 years old female girls, students, from very authentic and gentle Kosa tribe, her name is Asabuya, approached me and came to me, and she asked Ingyu, have you had a lunch? Because it's past the lunch time. I said, okay, I, I'm sorry, but I haven't eaten any yet, okay? But she took me, yeah, she physically dragged me, and then to nearby shom light. I'm very sure some of you know what is a shom light. Yeah, it used to be shom light in q u i p i a long time ago. Uh, with another, her, another black friend, She then brought to me bread and fried chips. At the time, I didn't know that why they brought uh, two things, bread and fried chips. After we returned from the shom light to our art college yard, we all sat down the yard. She put on some fried flag in between the bun, bread, and gave it to me. She said, This is your lunch today. But it was not just lunch for me. It was a kind. At the time, this little world of mine changed completely. Do you know why I'm telling this story? After worship service every Sunday, we had a time of fellowship in Karibu. It was a beautiful time, but sometimes we are easily have a talking 
within our clique or some of our group. But please, stop talking to your family or friends. Go up to someone you never talked. And please ask them this question. How are you doing? May I, may I have your name? For past one year, I have seen Ola and Joe had a conversation in the fellowship time. But I was wondering what they talking about each other because uh, I think they don't have uh, any commons. They from different nationality, different race. Even Ola is quite younger than Joe, <laughs> much younger than. Only one common is uh, belong to the same church called the San Colomba. But I'm still, I have no idea what they're talking about. But even last Sunday, I noticed that they, are, they have a talking. They have, I was wondering what they're talking about. But I think they are kind of, a, could be good model for everybody. Please break your stereotype to make a relationship together. Stop dodging a, people's skin color, or race, culture, language, or age. They are two different generations for the moment. And ask them first. Ask somebody's name. The name of people of different race, nationality may be not be familiar to you. But please do the first step, to be honest. Uh, there are some people in Mauritius, not from our church, they call me Ingu instead of Inkyu. In my country, Ingu is a dog name. I'm a very nice person. I'm a very nice guy. I'm, I'm very sure <laughs> even you don't <laughs> agree with it. But some of them, so over there, they still call me Ingu. I never gave them my time and my energy and my mind between us, between me and them, they're like huge river. Yeah. But if we want to cross the river, you have to call somebody's name correctly. Okay? You don't have to make your English name in the San Colomba. We respect your own culture. Okay, let me back to this someone. To the people of Jerusalem, Jesus was a simply a prophet, just a prophet from Nazareth. But we know this is not all. Jesus came to us with peace. He came to the peace between you and me. This is a kind of breach of peace, allowed you and me to have a communicate. Let me ask you in your mind, do you have a peace in your hearts? Now, do you have a peace in your mind? Last January, I didn't have a much peace in my heart, but it's not from your guys, because there were too many cyclones. It wasn't until 4 o'clock in the morning, I knew whether my, whether my children would be able to go to school tomorrow, this morning or not. Only 4 o'clock in the morning, I could know, but to me, Many things in Mauritius are still unpredictable and unclear. These things sometimes make me anxious. Okay. One reason we human feel anxiety is because our future is unpredictable. None of us knows what will happen tomorrow. Do you know tomorrow is raining or not clear? Even we don't know about weather, tomorrow's weather. Yesterday, my wife uh, took a Korean class in the Caribou. 24, chi 24, not children, 24 students attended that time. After the class, someone came to me and asked me, she said, I traveled to Korea last December. Korea is very safe, clean, and the people are very friendly compared to Mauritian. I said, no, that's not true. But she said, honestly, uh, at the time, I didn't want to come back to Mauritius. But I wonder, why do you live in Mauritius instead of South Korea? At the time, 
I was struck with how can I explain about my calling from the God to the, this Muslim woman? Because I don't want to make any conflict between Christian and Muslim in my church. Because I, I tried to make a very gentle answer. And then I point to my, our church, chapel, like this. Okay, God called me here. She said, oh yes. Ten years ago, I didn't know about the Mauritius. I'm sorry. Even I didn't know that Mauritius existed here. However, I'm currently living in Mauritius. Of course, I'm living in the Southerly, serving the church like this. Yesterday, one of the Korean students asked me again, we wanted to continue to study Korean language here, but uh, I'm not sure how long you will be here because we want to make uh, our lesson continually. But do you know how much longer you are living in Mauritius? How could I know? But this time, I pointed my palm toward the sky. What does it mean? My future in God's hand. In your future, also in our Lord Jesus' hands. The most amazing scene in the today's Bible is Jesus prophesies that the donkey would be tied in advance. The mother donkey with the calf is not common at the time. But Jesus knew the donkey was there. What does it mean? Jesus knows our future. Of course, he is our creator. Most of our fundamental anxieties are because we do not know our future. Do you know your future? No. But please, don't be anxiety. Don't be afraid of your future. Because our Father, the Lord, knows and Jesus Christ prepares your future. Now I'd like to make a conclude my sermon. As your pastor, I tried to live as a peacemaker in San Columba. I'm not sure if it was successful or not, but the reason I wanted to be a, become a peacekeeper, pastor in our church was as you know, our church is a very unique church in Mauritius because our church with uh, so many diverse races and so many different nationalities together. We could be easily divided. Even you can see the Korean gangs over there. Yeah, we divided. And my strategy, my method, I choose was to watch my mouth. I decided to be a listener, not a speaker. Because this is a lesson from my mom. Ingu, if you want to be a peacemaker in your church as your pastor, watch your mouth. Otherwise, somebody take your word as a judging them. Whether you admit or not, Mauritius, this country is a society where has invisible caste exist. This invisible class. So many people want to prove that I am better than you. Sometimes with the words, sometimes with the clothes, fancy clothes, sometimes with the watches, luxury watches, sometimes with the race. I am much quieter than you. Sometimes with cars, luxury cars. I almost respect the culture more your spot. The culture is completely different from the peace that the law gives to us. This is not peace. This is a failed peace. If you're coming from the, your horse, you are still riding, please come down, get off. And then please make be at eye levels with somebody. Before finishing, I will tell you one more thing. 
As everyone knows, there are currently two major wars on Earth. One is the Ukraine war, and other is the Gaza Strip war. I'm not forcing you to take a, some, some side here. But if you are Christian, you must pray to God for them. Heavenly Father, God, please give peace to the land. and to our family as well. At the same time, wherever it may be, wherever it is, it is church or it is your home, if there is someone who wants to destroy this peace, you should be say, no, please don't cross over this peace line. Because all wars in this world begin with a very slight, tiny f l i c h of peace. If someone's saying something negatively about the church to you, okay, let me tell you some secret from our church. Let me tell you something scandalous from, from someone from our church. Please speak up. No. No. And said, I am called to be a peacemaker by my God. Because My God, Jesus Christ, my Lord, came here in peace. Why can we say this? Because Jesus Christ came to us with peace, not with conflict. Today, we can shout out. We can speak up. We can call. Jesus is our peace. Amen.